What's going on everyone? It's your boy T and I'm here today to present to you the next Dyson up in the range of the evolution of Dyson vacuum cleaners. So in 2005 Dyson launched a new upright vacuum which was basically a DC-14 but better. It had a motorized brush bar and swivel steering. Right then guys let's take a closer look at the Dyson DC-15. So for the first time Dyson have actually incorporated brush control that is electrical. So there's no clutch mechanism or anything. It simply got two motors, one suction motor inside the ball and another motor separately driving the brush bar, which is pretty cool because you're not stealing power from the main motor to drive the brush bar. And what this also means is there's no rubber belts that can wear out or stretch out over time. So the DC-15 looks quite over-engineered, doesn't it? And it looks like a prototype DC-25. And I guess it is in a way because it's an early version of that. It's Dyson's first steerable vacuum. The cable on the DC-15 isn't as long as on the DC-14 for some reason. Despite being a larger machine, they've made the hose narrower than on the DC-14 and even the wand as well. And it might look like a DC-14, very similar to that, but believe me, they're not the same. For some reason, the cable hooks are quite weird as well. There's two hooks on the bottom, so you have to really wrap the cable around with care, trying to get it around both the cable hooks. But yeah, it's pretty similar to the DC-14 where you just lift out the wand like so and then release the catch right here to be able to use the wand and the hose. Now this is pretty cool on the DC-15. You've got this flip down sort of hose pivot thing, right? And it sounds like it locks into place like that, but it actually doesn't because it's very misleading. And to remove the hose, you simply pull it to the right like so and there's your removable hose. You'll have to excuse the condition of this vacuum, guys, because I haven't actually refurbished it in years. I mean, look at the monstrosity. You can see right inside the bin from the back of the vacuum because it's a huge hole in the chassis. Isn't that weird? They should have made all this plastic as well because I've seen DC-15 snap in half around here because there's not enough uh, of a chassis to keep this chassis rigid. Now, standard DC-14 procedure with the DC-15 applies here. You press in these two little buttons. The hose cuff comes off. And the tools are actually different as well on the DC-15. Because they, for some reason, narrowed the diameter of the hose and the wand fitting, the tools are narrow as well. They look like DC-14 tools, but they're not. So here's a DC-15 stair tool, right? If I try and put on a DC-14, notice how it doesn't fit because it's way too small for the DC-14 fitting. However, if I get a DC-14 attachment, and try and put it on the end of the wand, the DC-14 attachment is far too big for the DC-15. So Dyson, why have you done this? I have no idea. It's got the stair tool, the dust and brush, and the crevice tool, which are all the same sort of design as a DC-14. I've actually managed to misplace the crevice tool. I don't know where it is. I tried finding it, but I just can't seem to find it at the moment. I have no idea where it is, but it's quite a rubbish crevice tool anyway, let's be honest. It has a huge vent on the side, which I want to cover in tape to get the maximum suction, okay? And yet even the one cap is smaller than on the DC-14. Another way of telling if it's a DC-15 or a DC-14 one is it has this extra sort of plastic to keep it rigid because you know when you do the steering right, you need extra plastic to keep it rigid. So that's why they've added that. On the DC-14, that's not present. Now, traditionally with Dyson upright vacuums, you'd have to kick on the front of the Hoover to start vacuuming, right? With the DC-15, they've changed that design entirely. You do not kick down on the front of the vacuum. Instead, what you do is there's a pedal on the back of the vacuum now. You see how there's a picture of a foot? That's an indication of what you have to do. So, so you push down on the stabilizer with your foot right here. And that allows you to recline the vacuum. The rear wheels are the stabilizers, okay? They are not touching the floor in use at all because the machine rides on its own ball, as you can see. So this was the game changer, guys. You were able to make sharp 90 degree turns around furniture. So let's say if I wanna make a right turn from here, I can do just that. And I'm standing in one spot as well, by the way, guys. Same with the left turn. I can literally go around the corner with these. Now, I don't know why Dyson made this part springy because the main objective is to pull this out to recline it. So there's no U-bend on the DC-15, it's part of the hose. So that's why you remove the hose to check for blockages there. And the valve pipe is just the same. Well, the idea is the same anyways. There's only one button right here to release the valve pipe. It's quite a wide diameter as well actually over here, but it gets narrow, which is not something I'm a huge fan of. Here's your changeover valve. 
See how it works? Pretty cool, isn't it? You've got this stretch hose on the side, which leads to the cleaner head. And funnily enough, it actually stretches to quite a distance. I mean, look how far it stretches. And another funny thing about this is you can actually fit tools directly onto this hose right here. So if you feel like you can't be bothered removing the wand because you have to put the machine upright and all, just pull this off and just vacuum the edges like that. Don't ask me how I figured this out, all right? <laughs> There's a famous Dyson Ball logo at the time. I remember when the DC-15 came out, right? I thought it was really cool how they had just a Dyson Ball and there was these yellow lines. It was like a glowing little trail behind it. I thought that was really cool. So early DC-15s just had a normal plastic cleaner head. The later DC-15s, however, had a clear brush bar housing. And also, what's different about the DC-15 is for the first time ever, Dyson have actually used a metal sole plate. So this was the first time they designed a metal sole plate on an upright vacuum, unfortunately. But it was nice to see, and I'm glad they brought out this design once upon a time. And this sole plate is user removable because you have normal Phillips screws. One, two, three, four, and five. All the screws are the same size apart from the central one, which is the shortest. And another cool feature about the DC-15 is that you could actually remove the brush bar without having to deal with any belts. It just slides out like a SIBO vacuum. So what you have here on either side is a plastic fastener, like the old Dyson's had. There's your end cap, it's got sleeve bearing in there. And the brush bar just slides out like so. And same with the other side, so you just pull the end cap up, lift it out. The brush bar slides out in its full entirety, and there we are. Now these brush bar bristles, you know what, let me talk about the brush bar, hold on, let me put it back in guys. These bristles stick out the sole plate that much, so once again, it's ideal for low pile carpets potentially medium pile as well, but for deep pile carpets, unfortunately not. Just like the clutch DC-14s had, the DC-15 also had a large debris channel to be able to vacuum up large debris. There was no shark duo cleans in the mid 2000s, and this is what Dyson came up with. So for hard floors, the DC-14s were the clutch and the DC-15 were fantastic. You didn't have to get a broom or anything to sweep your kitchen up. You could just get the Dyson out, vacuum away and have clean hardwood floors. And this Dyson's not perfect, it's got the velo strip coming off, it's missing the crevice tool, it's got some marks here, it's got huge marks on the side. Now the bed and cyclone design on the DC-15 is pretty much the same as the DC-14 with one exception. The difference being, well actually there's two, the filter now has no plastic thing in the middle right, so it's better for airflow. It's just one whole filter, so this filter's better for airflow. But what you have right here is this little gizmo. This prevents you from closing the lid of the cyclone without a filter, because see this? It's like a safety lock. Now I'm able to close the filter door or lid, and there we are, that's all done. I've polished the bin as well, as you can see, so it looks nice and shiny, ready for the performance test. Yes, I do make my machines look new for performance tests because I want the best aesthetics. You can see the cyclones all clean in there. I've just jet washed it. It's not had the deepest clean. I've just given it a jet wash and it's good enough really, isn't it? They've stopped making the colorful shroud and the main cyclone. They just grayed it out since the DC-15, unfortunately. And then they brought it back on, I think it was the DC-41. By the way, guys, I have a brand new DC-41, let me show you. Yes, guys, I've got a brand new DC-41 animal. It arrived today, and I can't wait to unbox this and show you guys. Hence why I'm showing you my DC-15 first, which is the first Dyson ball, and then working my way up to the DC-41. I'm really excited to show you this, guys. But for today, I'm gonna show you the DC-15, then the DC-18, then the DC-25, and then maybe DC-24 as well, if you guys wanna see that. Right, now, the DC-15 featured a brand new motor, I think it was a Panasonic motor, which was really quiet and really reliable. And the DC-15 featured 220 air watts, I believe. So let's do a suction test to see how much water lift it has. Impressive! And what I like about this is the PCB, in other words, printed circuit board, stays cool during use. So, the DC-15 is really, really quiet. That's what I love about the new Panasonic motor that they introduced. So. So here's what it sounds like. It's really, really quiet. I'm not raising my voice, am I? You know how much of a loud person I am, right? You can tell this is my quiet voice. But when I turn the brush bar on, you can really hear the power this in. It's not even that loud either. It adds a bit of noise, but it's a really pleasant sounding vacuum. 
You can see the carpet lines already, and that's already on the forward push. Yeah, the DC-15 was not a bad machine at all. And then the house option. Now, it would have come with the mini turbine head, as you can see, but I can't use it because there's no adapter on it. You need an adapter to make it work with the DC-15. Do you know what? I can't believe I forgot this. Let's see how long the cable actually really is. So, you know, usual location where I plug in my vacuums. It can reach up to just about here. Because now at this stage, right, I can't reach any further than where it is at the moment. So just the end of the kitchen, really. And finally, we are going to be taking a look at the hose length. Lift up on the wand, like so. Release the wand. You know what, I wonder if this catch would fit a DC-33. Looks very similar, doesn't it? 13 stairs. I'm just about reaching the 13 step because at the moment, I've got the wand on and the hose isn't really reaching any further than this. Dyson, please make this make sense. Why is the hose on the DC-15 nowhere near as long as the one on the DC-14? Because this is at its maximum length, right? Tell me why it reaches only 13, 12, 11, just about, almost 11 stairs. So, this has been the Dyson DC-15 Animal Vacuum, brought to you by your host T from Power 786. The DC-15 was a very solid, capable vacuum. It was really nice and quiet. It was powerful, with a good, decent brush bar. It worked well on hard floors. It's got brush control. It has a fantastic steering design. It's got a metal sole plate. And do you know what? They were actually quite reliable. The only thing about these is sometimes the chassis would break because they would get faded by UV damage and then they would just snap because of the way it's designed as well. Especially with how there's a lack of support for the chassis. I mean, look how thin this is. They could have made all this area plastic as well, but they haven't. The yellow DC-15 all floors would have had just a pad filter. DC-15 Allergy was the white and orange one, like the DC-14 all floors. So thank you all for learning about the Dyson DC-15 with me. Congratulations on learning about the DC-15 at the Powers Institute of Dyson Learning. If you are looking forward to a performance test on this vacuum, stay tuned and there will be one up very, very soon.